So I'm not supposed to be talking, so I'm going to sit down. What I want to do is introduce you to the councilwoman for District 7. That's the very district we're sitting in. Without further ado, to read our city proclamation, I give you Councilwoman Sandoval. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for this honor, Michelle. We uh, spoke about it yesterday on the steps of City Hall, and I'm so glad that you had this opportunity, this little speaking part that I could take in today's very important uh, event. I also want to thank Pastor Joseph for being so welcoming and having us here at his, at his facility. And I must also thank one other person who's on stage behind me. He's actually my chief of staff, and he's in, in the Live Oak Singers. That's Joe over there who did that. <laughs> which means you might be rushing Joe for constituent concerns at the end of this whole event. It happens to me. Um, I, am, I am extremely proud to, to read this proclamation. We are now officially part of the Fast Track Cities here in San Antonio. We are the first one in Texas. So we're, yeah. There. And I also want to, before I forget, congratulate Michelle and Beat AIDS for your 30th anniversary and for the work that you have accomplished. Okay. I will read this. It is signed by our mayor, Ron Nirenberg, but I will read it using my own voice, so I can't imitate him very well. Um, say the proclama proclamation. Whereas San the San Antonio World AIDS Day Collaborative will observe World AIDS Day and host its annual Gathering of Remembrance and Hope event at the Living Church at Woodlawn Point on December 1st, 2017 to honor the memory of the individuals who lost their lives to HIV and AIDS and to show support for those who are still striving and whereas an estimated 36.7 million people worldwide are living with HIV making it one of the most important global public health issues in recorded history. And whereas, despite recent improved access to antiretroviral treatment in many regions of the world, the AIDS epidemic claims an estimated 2 million lives each year, of which nearly 270,000 are children. And Whereas, the collaborative is comprised of local, community-based, and aid service organizations, faith-based institutions, and public leaders to address the devastating impact of HIV AIDS in the community. And, last whereas, whereas, education of HIV AIDS helps reduce the stigma surrounding the disease and decreases its spread, while knowledge promotes responsible behavior and protects our families and society. Now, therefore, I, Ron Nirenberg, Mayor of the City of San Antonio, in recognition thereof, do hereby proclaim December 1st, 2017, to be World AIDS Day in San Antonio. Thank you. If it is in your faith tradition to pray like it is ours, then we invite you to pray with us. If it is not in your faith tradition to pray, then we invite you to meditate. And if that is not part of your faith tradition, then we invite you to uh, sit quietly, close your eyes, and send good thoughts uh, our way. Would you join us, please? Heavenly Creator, source of all good, thank you for the opportunity for us to come together this day, with people from all over the world, this day, friends, this day of life, this day of hope. We ask for your comfort as we remember our loved ones who were taken too young. Even in our challenges, 
the middle may remind each of us here today and prepare us for how far we have to go. The light and the truth of all that is righteous, we pray. And everybody said, Amen.
in between the reading of our sacred names, there will be a refrain. There will be a program. And it goes like this. For each child that's born, a morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. For each child that's born, the morning star rises and sings to the universe who we are. So we'll resound that remembering who we are, remembering those who passed before us. Michael E. Jerry R. Carol M. Ramon G. Rebecca P. Becca M. Jim I. Anthony W. Ray P. Daniel R. Christopher M.
section of our service about how we live. And who better to ask how people live with HIV than folks who are in an AIDS service organization. So we have four members of the Beat AIDS Coalition and Trust staff. One of them is currently in the hospital, and so he asked to be present with us at the service by video. So he is a counselor, a senior counselor, is previously the director of AIDS services in Corpus Christi, Texas, and he is a substance abuse right-wing counselor with Beat AIDS. And I asked him two questions. Um, if you could give an overview of how AIDS services have changed toward people in the last 30 years. And so Andy McFall is present with us here on video. And then we'll have our live staff speak to you. Uh, many people have no idea that they had a disease until it started to show on their body somewhere, whether they would be Kaposi cell coma lesions or um, losing a great deal of weight, something like that. Um, in those days, there were no medications available. Mm. Possibly AZT, if you got out. So we had to help people as counselors, both with immediate needs, like uh, you know, let's file the claim for insurance for your mortgage. Let's make sure that we have as much in order with your friends and family as we can. Um, how to divide the day in things that must be done versus things that we can do just to relax. Um, if there is anything I could recommend to counselors and to patients during that type of crisis, it is hold on to things that are timeless and beautiful. Um, when the city of Sarajevo was under attack in the Balkan Wars about 20 years ago, I'm told that the symphony of that city, even though there was no electricity, water was erratic, buildings had been bombed out, that they got together and decided to take on the challenge of the most difficult Mozart pieces they could find. Something they would not particularly enjoy um, during a regular session, but during a time of crisis, they had to have faith that the music would be beautiful and that it would be worth their efforts. So um, I would recommend something like that. Also, I went to Louise Hay groups, which were guided meditations for people with HIV. And the groups were kind enough to let those of us who work in the field join them also because we were exposed to the effects of HIV all day long. A second era began whenever HIV testing came about, sometime in the mid to late 80s. And at that point, people could know if they were HIV positive early, before there were any outward signs. This had some disadvantages um, in that people could be very healthy looking and yet be HIV positive. And and when that happens, it's not so hard to look in the mirror and say, well, what does a piece of paper say? Look at me, I'm not here. I don't have it. And that becomes a belief. So there were people in those days who technically knew they had HIV, but emotionally they did not know it. And they could not um, make a life with that knowledge. So if you ask them, have you been tested? Are you negative? They could say yes and yes, and it may not be true. But they're not intentionally lying as much as they're just not able to face the information that they did receive. During these times, the focus for people with HIV switched to relationships. You might have had two people who were partners for five years, then you find out one is positive and the other is negative. You might have people who meet and decide they want to date, and then find out that one is positive and one is negative. For the person who's negative, they could say things like, well, what do I do now if I date this person and 
well, you're just friends, you're not really in love, and then he becomes sick, what do I do? How much devotion do I owe him or this relationship if we're just pals with benefits? Versus if I, I can't say to him, oh, now you're sick, well, I'm gone, see ya. I mean, that would be a thing he all would do. So there were many challenges that came out once the test for HIV antibodies appeared also. The third epic, if you want, began about 20 years ago with the advent of multi-drug therapies. This concept was borrowed from tuberculosis control, where multiple drugs had been used, uh, <clears throat> bactericidals and bacteriostatics, over this time period. But what's interesting is the shifts in population. Many of the people who responded very well to multiple drug therapy have reintegrated into almost all of their lives. They've gone back to work. They are in love. They see a future. For them, things are brighter than they have ever been in HIV disease for 30 years. The difficulty is, at the same time, HIV becomes a disease of secondary status. What we have found in the last 15 to 20 years is that many people who become newly positive have some factor in their life that makes it difficult for them to remain HIV negative. It could be active drug addiction, homelessness, susceptibility to attack, um, alcoholism, all these different things can come into a person's life. And there are groups that you can identify and say, members of this group overwhelmingly are HIV positive by age 30. That means that our current education on HIV prevention and avoidance is not adequate for them. They, they will come in to be tested, and we ask them, how do you think you might be positive? And they'll tell us, oh, I shared a needle, oh, I had unprotected sex, oh, I knew someone had it, but I didn't think I'd get it. Um, all these different ways. So knowledge is not power with this third group of people. However, there is power there. Human beings change something as primal as our sexual expression only if we have a future worth protecting. One of the old sayings is, HIV always transmits in a vacuum, and HIV never transmits in a vacuum. Scientifically, it has to have an anaerobic environment, which it does, and that's how it gets from one body into the other directly. But socially, these days, many people who find themselves diagnosed with HIV have other issues that surround them that make life difficult for them in many ways. My personal belief is that if we are going to be successful in the fight against the spread of HIV, that we have to look beyond safer sex techniques and start looking at what will make life wonderful for the people who we are trying to serve. Thank you for this opportunity. It's a pleasure. My heartfelt appreciation to everyone in the field of HIV work, everyone who has HIV and has gone out of your way to carry the message of avoidance, to all the people who are family members, loved ones, friends, and neighbors. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Andy. It's an honor. So we have with us some of our other workers on the continuum of care. Mr. Andy was a counselor who deals with people after they have already identified, but we have a tester here. I'll read a little about it, Jose. So could you just give us a few words about what it is like to be a tester, how is it easy or gratifying or satisfying to do that work, and what is hard and challenging? Thank you. Hello, everyone. As Catherine said, my name is Aurelio Jose, um, but I also go by Leo. I am the prevention I am a supervisor at one of the testing uh, aspects that we have at the AIDS, and uh, we go, so I go out into the community and we approach people to ask them. 
Testing is a very uh, serious thing that we encourage people to do because testing allows you to know your health. It allows you to keep track of whether you are healthy. Uh, and not only do we do just HIV testing, but we also do syphilis and Hep C. Uh, now these are all free, of course, and um, they're very easy tests. All it takes is between five to 20 minutes. You'll get your results right then and there and uh, you'll walk away knowing your status for each of those tests that we have. Um, it's very, very imperative that you know, we do get people to come in and get tested because as Mr. was saying, we are now a fast track city and we are trying to get San Antonio to be 90, 90, 90, which means 90% of the people in San Antonio know their status. And being an uh, HIV positive person myself, I know that if I would have gotten tested, I probably would have been one of these names uh, that was said here today. So uh, once someone, whether they are previously diagnosed or they are newly diagnosed with HIV, once they come into our organization, one of the things that we do is that we link them to one of our fabulous uh, linkage specialists that we have. Um, on our payroll, and so I'm going to introduce our next speaker, Sylvia de la Santo. Fabulous, thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, as Ms. Durham said, um, we have two um, areas or two ways we are hitting this epidemic, and one of them. Um, through PrEP and the other one is through getting people tested and getting them into care. My role as a linkage specialist means that I will um, take a person and personally deliver them to the doctor and sit there with them through, to ask any questions uh, with the doctor that they may have to allay some of their fears uh, while they're there. Um, we don't uh, give a person a result and leave them on their own. It's very important that people are very afraid the first few days that they know that they have HIV and for a lot longer after that. And so if they're not um, hand walked to the doctor many times, they're going to walk out. So that is my role in beat aids and Ms. Durham have been gracious enough to let me spend all the time that I need with those clients to make sure that they make that first visit and even their second and third visits. Um, I just want to say that a lot of people out here have assisted, other than the staff that I work with, which has been great in referring me people um, to back to care. I also work with the community in bringing people back into care. Um, I'll call out a couple of people, Fidencio, Mary Helen, Gloria, they've been uh, gracious enough to bring me people and say, listen, this person needs help, please help them, and that's what I do. Uh, I'm not going to not work with others in the community to get all of us to a um, status that's undetectable. I'm going to work with anybody and everybody that I have to uh, to make that happen. So um, it's as I as I talk to many women, especially the women, because the women have a harder time getting into care and particularly staying in care. One of the things I tell them is, if you've ever been on an airplane. Pilot always says, put the mask on yourself first. And as women, we forget to do that many times. We don't take care of ourselves. We're busy taking care of our children, our elderly parents, our husbands. But we need to take care of ourselves. And so for any of the women out here, particularly in the audience, who know someone that isn't in care, that doesn't want to go into care, that may be afraid of what that entails, bring them two beat aids and let one of our linkage specialists, especially the fabulous Sylvia, as you have said, and, and, and let us link them, let us link them, let us talk to them. Maybe there's barriers that they don't even want to share with you. The stigma of HIV is still very real. And they may not want to share that, even though they've shared their diagnosis with you. Bring them to us, let us talk to them personally, one-on-one. -on -one. Everything is confidential. Once I get them into the care and we get them rolling on what they need to do and they're with their doctors, we link them to case management for well-rounded services so that they get everything they need. And one of our case managers is here tonight and her name is Latoya and she's gonna to explain to you what happens after I've sent them off her way. No, 
personal case management is about maintenance. It's about maintaining your health care. It's about um, maintaining your um, your medication, maintaining housing. A lot of people that um, are life happens, so there are a lot of barriers um, that will keep people from staying in care. Sometimes, how am I going to pay for my medication? Um, how, what about housing? I'm homeless, or I have a drug addiction. So that's what case management is for: is to help meet any kind of barriers that you have that would not allow you to go to that would not allow you to stay in care. We need transportation. We can offer bus passes, referrals for rides. Um, if you speak Spanish, VA has trans, uh, translators, <laughs> so um, we're able to, like like they said before, to be. Um, we're well rounded to be able to meet the client where they are and to ensure their care. We thank the staff for all the work they do to keep people in care and to identify people who need care. And we really go the extra mile. So the following song is Go the Distance. Thank you to all the heroes and the aid service work that's out there in this community now.
mention real quick that VA cannot do all this great work without you know the entire community. So I want to thank some of our partners, especially the N Stigma and HIV Alliance, which is made up of the City of San Antonio, Uni University Health System, Alamo Area Resource Center, San Antonio AIDS Foundation, Mujeres Unidas, Central Med, and many, many other organizations. And the Deltas are here tonight. My sorors, thank you for being here. That's why I pledge Delta, because the Deltas care. All these churches, thank you so much to this church. I, I know I don't get the mic anymore, so I have to say that right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Maybe I need to think, I need to 
think, oh my Lord, Jesus, Mama, why did this be true? I didn't know. I wonder, I just, I, I need to think. I need to think over oh, again. What, what is it? Is it cancer? No, what is it? not cancer. Then what is it, Mom? I don't want it. Quiet. Don't worry. But I'm going to keep you loud. You've heard him tell me what's going on. What is it, Mom? I was 68 years old. I did. I met your dad when I was 22. Then we got married a year later. For 40 years we loved each other. Those were the best years of our lives. And then it was gone. For six years, I didn't do nothing. I didn't. I, I don't know why this is happening. Okay, so, but still, what is it, Mom? Oh, Mama, what is it? Just, okay, okay. No, your voice. Tell me what it is. Okay. Is it cancer? No, one that is not cancer. Then what is it? HIV. Wonder I tested positive for HIV. What do you mean, HIV? What do you mean? Don't you be quiet? I don't want them in my conversation. Oh, HIV, I don't understand. Dad has been gone for six years. He never said anything about what you're talking about. I didn't say he was your dad. What? <laughs> I remember this picture when I came out, I always hope 
Don't fear, because I am with you. Don't, don't be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you. I will hold you. And with my right strong hand. I will stand on God and never leave you. But you will always have hope. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. But what do I have to hope for? A cure? Yeah. My job? My husband? Uh, what am I hoping for all this hope you got? And my husband cheating on me. Ha! <laughs> I know, I know. He ain't bringing all the problems to my front door. And trying to talk about him cheating and about love. Bring y'all here all that act. <laughs> Listen to y'all now, I see how and why I do it up right here in this spot. Yeah, crap happens, and it's difficult to see God's love for you when all bad stuff is happening. But I'm going to tell you something. Hope, I got it. Hope. I hope that was scary. <laughs>
On this World AIDS Day and every day, let us remember those lives lost to an epidemic that tore at our hearts, ravaged our communities, but could not steal our love for each other. Amen. We're held in the web of life that is often torn and sometimes bleeding, but always healing. There's our strength. Our precious life proceeds from love, the very ground on which we walk together. On this World AIDS Day, let us each do what we can so that this ongoing health crisis will not continue to grow in grief and sorrow, but will be met and overcome by the power of love. We know that each and every human life is precious in God's, in God's sight, and so on this World's Day and every day, let us not only remember our sisters and brothers dealing with the virus, but let us reach out to all of those who are marginalized and demonized by the virus. Let us reach out with a message of love and a message of hope. On this World AIDS Day and every day, may this light that we light so brightly here tonight, the light of hope, the light of love, the light of peace and joy, shine brightly here in San Antonio, in Texas, around our nation, and throughout the world, in all of the many holy and precious names of that which we worship and adore, we say, let it be so. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Will I come closer to this real? No, I'm going to stay right here. Thank <laughs> you. 